Hello. My name is Ankar Rosales, and it is my pleasure to introduce Congresswoman and Democratic Presidential Candidate Tulsi Gabbard. As a veteran of the Hawaiian National Guard who was deployed in Iraq and Kuwait, Congresswoman Gabbard has tirelessly worked to end American intervention in needless, regime-changing wars. She knows what the true cost of war is and has made a personal vow to ensure that the United States will not make the same mistakes of the past. She has approached every issue through the lens of what will best serve the American people, secure the country, and promote peace. She fights to protect the environment and put an end to climate change and wants to ensure that the next generation of Americans will actually have a world to live on. As an advocate for health care for all and the protection of Medicare and Social Security, Congresswoman Gabbard wants to ensure that every American does not have to fear going to a doctor's appointment because of how much it might cost them or that every older American has a secure future and does not have to keep working until they are 80 or 85 to be able to sustain themselves. Fighting for civil rights, Congresswoman Gabbard is in line with the ideals of LULAC in protecting the voice of everyone and making sure that those voices are listened to. She fights for civil liberties to make sure everyone is on an equal playing field and to ensure that there is justice for all, not some. Congresswoman Gabbard wants to create a renewable, sustainable economy that works for everyone and wants to bring about an era of peace by putting service above self and reclaiming democracy from the forces of hatred and division. Please join me in welcoming Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Round of applause for Angel. That was incredible. <laughs> aloha, everybody. I'll try that one more time. Where I come from, when I say aloha, you say? Aloha. There we go. Uh, it's so great to be here to close out your evening with you. Uh, and I start with aloha because it's really important. It's not just because I come from Hawaii, and it's not just a word that uh, we use to say hello or goodbye. There's a reason why we greet each other with aloha. And I want to just share with you that powerful meaning. Because to me, it's central to why we are gathered here and to the mission that lies before us in this country. What aloha really means is I come to you with an open heart. I come to you with respect, with compassion, with care, with a recognition that we are all children of God, we are all connected regardless of the color of our skin or where we come from or how we choose to worship God or who we love. It is this aloha that inspires us to build bridges, to overcome divides, to come together, to work together inspired by this love and this care that we have for each other, for our country and for our future. It is this aloha that has inspired me throughout my life. I'm grateful to have grown up in Hawaii. It continues to inspire me in the work that we have to do. The work that we have to do to make sure that we truly have a government that is of, by, and for the people. Of, by, and for the people. Something that we hear so much throughout our lives and maybe we take for granted until we get to the point where we realize, hey, we don't really have a government of, by, and for the people, do we? No, we have a government that is of, by, and for the rich and powerful, or of, by, and for greedy corporations, or of, by, and for self-serving politicians, but not a government of, by, and for the people. And so this is what motivates me. It's why I'm wanting for president to bring about these values of service above self to the presidency, to make sure that our White House is truly a beacon of light and hope and opportunity for every single person in this country. I got to tell you, when I was a kid growing up in Hawaii, I never once dreamed of getting involved in politics, what to speak of running for president and standing on a stage in front of hundreds of people giving a speech. I was extremely shy. Is there any shy kids out here tonight? Yeah? 
Glad you're sitting down there, not up here. <laughs> I was you. <laughs> I'm the fourth of five kids. I have three older brothers and a younger sister. And of the five of us, absolutely the most shy, the most introverted. My little sister is actually here with me tonight. And when we were kids, I would make her be my spokesperson. Mom would send us to the grocery store to pick up some milk or some bread, and I'd make my sister talk to the clerk behind the cash register. I didn't want any part of it, and I was just fine. But what really changed things for me was when I experienced growing up in Hawaii, loving the ocean and surfing and hiking in the mountains, really caring about our home, and then seeing how when I would go to the beach, there'd be trash lying around. That kind of made me mad. I wanted to do something about it, and so I got my friends together. We'd go and we'd start cleaning up the beaches on the weekends, but that wasn't really quite enough. So we created a, a nonprofit and took an education program out to elementary school kids across the state called The Adventures of Water Woman. I had a little skit. I wrote a little skit. I got to play Water Woman, of course, in the skit, but we got to take this and, and share with these kids you know, eight, nine, ten-year-old kids about why it's important that we protect our home, why it's important we protect our water and our land. And it was so much fun, but it really got me out of my own shell, leaving behind my own fears and my anxieties because I understood that it wasn't about me, that this was a small way that I could do my best to try to make a positive impact, to bring about positive change to be of service to my community, to make that, that difference, to make that lasting difference. So later I ended up running for the State House of Representatives. I was 21 years old and a lot of people said, you're too young. I said, too young for what? Right? There were a lot of issues I was very passionate about and leadership that I saw that was lacking. So instead of pointing fingers in both directions, saying, okay, well, somebody else is gonna do it, somebody else will step up to the plate, I said, I gotta do my part. And I think that's one of the most important things for us as we're gathered here tonight, is every one of us thinking about how can we do our part and never ever allowing anyone to stop you or stand in your way by telling you you're too young or you're too inexperienced, or you don't check this box or that box or that box, because the most important quality, the most important qualification, whether you're thinking about running for office, or you're thinking about leading a campaign, or there's just something you really care about and you wanna do something about, it is that care that is the most important quality. I think that deserves a round of applause, right? <laughs> Because there's a lot of challenges that we're facing. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I get the opportunity through my work in Congress, I've served for uh, over six years, to meet with a lot of young leaders or young people who, who say, well, how do you get involved with politics? How do you one day become a member of Congress? And I share with them just what I've shared with you tonight is what I experienced from a young age that I was most happy in my life, not when I was out doing things for myself, but when I was doing all that I could to try to make a positive impact. And every step of the way, whether it was that first race for the State House, as I was anxiously knocking on doors for the very first time, summoning up the courage to go to door by door by door, not knowing who would be on the other side, having people question me, saying, hey, you're just a kid, what are you doing? But then having that conversation and just sharing what was in my heart my desire to be of service to them, to be a strong voice for our community, to make sure that our local government in Hawaii was a government of, by, and for the people, to be that champion for folks who are struggling and pursuing their hopes and their dreams. There will always be powers who will try to get in your way, people who are not interested in changing the status quo, and they will tell you, as I have heard throughout my life, don't bother. You have no chance at winning. I was told this over and over when I first ran for Congress. You have no chance. You're 31 years old. Come back in 20 years. Try again. As we say in Hawaii, I heard this, I smiled, said aloha, and kept going. 
I kept going because Because I always knew who I was working for and who really has the power. Now, just as we saw in Hawaii when I was younger and growing up is the same thing we see in Washington. There's a few people who think that they hold the power and that they really are the ones who determine the future for our country. Whether they're people with a lot of money or people with a lot of political power, they really believe that they are the ones who make the decision until we, the people, prove them wrong. And this is why it's so important for every one of us here, for every person in this country, to really take this to heart and to recognize the power that we have in our own voices and in our own hands. So this is the charge I leave you with here tonight. Think about what you really care about, the issues that you're passionate about, the people who you love, the place that you call home, and think about how in your life, in your way, you can be of service and make that positive change happen. Thank you all so much for being here. It's great to see you. Have a wonderful rest of your stay here in Milwaukee and a great conference. Aloha.